America has a long history of treating our cemeteries as hallowed ground where the dead could rest in peace for eternity, or so they fought. However, for some of these sacred burial sites, this has proven not to be the case, especially if they interfere with commercial endeavors. Sadly, there are numerous black cemeteries on this list, because when the cemetery property is purchased, corporations quickly make empty promises to relocate the occupants. But relocation takes money and time. Therefore, these promises can be quickly broken and the family's loved ones are paved over by roads, parking lots, and buildings. Others just sell the property and abandon the graves, resulting in their eventual reclamation by the forces of nature. Here in Northwest Florida, there are two groups that lead local historians in locating many of the abandoned cemeteries in the Escambia and Santa Rosa County area. The unique history of Pensacola and the unincorporated history of Escambia County have already completed work on several black and white cemeteries, such as the Millview Cemetery off Blue Angel Parkway, which was reputed to have paved over part of the cemetery during its construction. Also on the list is the Black Pine Barren Cemetery, which unfortunately is now on private land. There is also the old Black Muskogee Cemetery, the Chumukla Flats burial site, and the McDavid Cemetery. The Lower Pine Barren Cemetery off Highway 29 at Pine Barren Creek has also been researched and found that there's the possibility that part of the old cemetery was paved over by the new highway. One recent project was the Chumukla burial site in Santa Rosa County, Florida. The unique history of Pensacola joined up with the unincorporated history of Escambia County to pool their information to locate the abandoned site. At one time, this cemetery was said to have had more than 50 to 75 graves belonging to African Americans. The last official visitation of this site in 1984 listed 11 marked graves, however, there's only about seven still visible today. It is unknown whether this site is located on private land or not. However, it is adjacent to a farmer's field, whose land should be respected by any visitors. The 1984 visitation also listed a set of cement steps that is believed to have once belonged to the Mount Moria Baptist Church and were still visible at the time just off the web landing road. The cemetery is located 0.2 miles north of the old church site. Additional research of an old land survey noted the church's name as Mount Moriah, a likely misspelling. This is the clearest entrance way into the old cemetery, and as you can see, it is very overgrown, so dress accordingly. We're looking for the Chamukla Cemetery, which is uh, pretty much an abandoned African-American cemetery in Chamukla, um, going on some possible GPS coordinates. There's an old fence post. I don't know if that's a fence to the cemetery or it's an old fence to the property. We're going to find a grave, there's about anywhere from 11 to 14 people buried here. If there's a cemetery here, it is in bad shape. Very overgrown, just sad. I to find a grave. Either find a grave or Santa Rosa Historical Society. There's also a uh, World War One soldier buried here. Oop. All right, I think there's one. I think we must have found it. Yep, I see some more. This name of Bird, B Y R D. Looks like died in 1929. Is this a government tombstone? There's another one over there. 
There's also a lot of depressions which indicate other burials that just don't have markers. John Haynes. Beulah Haynes. Yeah, there's, I really like to watch where I step when I'm out here. I don't wanna actually step in an old grave. Right, this is a Hamilton Haynes, our blood brother and husband. Right, this is more recent. This is April 12th, 1971. Um, there's a slab and then there's a, you know, a, not a slab, but looks like a semen enclosure over there. The headstone's buried. Or almost buried. This is, this is a shame. This really is a shame. <clears throat> I wish I knew more of the story on why this is in Chamukla. Maybe we'll find that out later. Here's another slab. All right, well, we're gonna continue looking. I really wanna find the uh, the World War I veteran. Um, so we're gonna keep looking. If I, uh, when I find it, I'll take a picture of it and I'll post it on the page. Here we located the grave of William Thomas, nicknamed Will, who was born in 1888 and would pass away in July 1971. At the time of his death, he was residing at 2904 North Tarragona Street in Pensacola, and his eulogy was preached by the Reverend Elijah Causey. The Reverend was the son-in-law of Sarah Presley, who was connected to many of those in this cemetery. In 1910, Thomas was working at a lumber mill in Baghdad and residing with a fellow employee, George and Alice Evans. On August 8, 1935, he would marry Maddie Bell Collier. However, 10 years later, the two had apparently gone their separate ways. We also found the partially damaged burial site of Claire Mae Clemens, which is also spelled with one M. She was born in 1918 and would perish tragically in 1956. On that fateful day of September 17, Clara was driving during a heavy rainstorm and westbound on Hancock Street in the community of Brent. As she approached the L and N railroad tracks, she either didn't see the oncoming train or thought she had enough time. Either way, the train was traveling between 55 and 60 miles per hour when it struck her car, knocking Clara out of the vehicle and killing her instantly. Her funeral services was held at the New Hope Baptist Church in the Pensacola community of Goulding located around the intersection of Palafox and Leonard Street. Her service was preached by Reverend Elijah Causey, and her survivors were listed as her husband Leonard, who was a U.S. Civil Service aircraft cleaner. There were also three daughters and two sons. Her son, Army Sergeant Edward Clemens, had been in Vietnam only 24 days when he was killed in action on February 7, 1969, as a combat engineer with the 18th Engineer Brigade. Today. He and his brother Cecil are buried in the Barrancas National Cemetery in Pensacola. Cariel McRae was born in 1887 and died on April 15, 1956. She was the wife of James Alex Inner Harris, who was born in 1884 and buried next to her in 1976 in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. They were married on November 19, 1912 in Madison County, Alabama, and sometime after 1920, they moved to the Wallace community in Santa Rosa County. At the time, James was working as a farmer 
and Carrie as a domestic laundress. James had been born in Fort Deposit, Alabama, but by 1930 was working in Muscovy at the Southern States Lumber Mill in Escambia County. After Carrie's death, a grave marker was placed on her grave to identify where the gravestone was to be located. However, no tombstone was ever erected that we know of. Next to her is a depression that marks the grave of James. Then came Emma Jean Haynes Burt, who called her Jean for short. She was born in 1902 and died on March 1, 1929 at the young age of 26 years old. She was the daughter of John Haynes and Beulah Simpkins. Her mother would pass away in 1931 and her father 20 years later, with both being buried in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. Nearby are the graves of her brother Hamilton and her sister Mary Wash Haynes Lovett. In 1910, Emma, along with her parents and siblings, were living in the Pine Level community in Santa Rosa County, where her father was working as a chipper in a turpentine mill. Ten years later, 17-year-old Emma was working on her father's farm in Jay. Following Emma's death, her two children, Willie Johnny and Katie Mayberg, went to live with their maternal grandparents in nearby Wallace. As for the whereabouts of Emma's husband, Willie, the only information we have is he supposedly died in 1932. According to historical records, John Haynes was born in 1876 in Sandersville, Georgia, to the union of Nathan Medford Bowen and his mother Wash Haynes Bowen. His father was a white Confederate soldier in a regiment of Georgia militia that was commanded by Colonel James S. Hook. Hook's father was Daniel Hook, who was a prominent physician in the area before becoming the mayor of Augusta, Georgia. His son, Colonel Huck, was one of the electors on the Stephen Douglas Democratic ticket in 1861 in his campaign against Abraham Lincoln. James was elected to the first Confederate state legislature that same year before volunteering for service in the Confederate Army, where he was elected colonel of Nathan Bowen's regiment before being discharged due to physical disability. In the meantime, John Haynes would appear in Bruton, Alabama in 1899. In the following year, he would marry Beulah Simpkins in Butler County. By 1902, they had relocated to Chumukla as a chipper at a turpentine mill. By 1910, they were living next door to Beulah's mother, who still had three children at home while she worked as a dipper at her son-in-law's turpentine mill. In 1920, John was farming in the Jay community, but he would lose Beulah in 1931 and buried her in the Chumukla Cemetery. In 1940, he was living in Wallace and still farming, but his age caught up with him 10 years later when he moved in with his daughter Mary Lovett in Pensacola. He passed away on July 12, 1955, and was buried beside Beulah. Hamilton Haynes was born in 1899, while his parents, John and Beulah Simpkins Haynes, were living in Bruton, Alabama, and his father was doing day labor. By 1910, the family had relocated to the community of Pine Level in Santa Rosa County and John had taken up work at the turpentine mill. In 1920, Hamilton was 20 years old and working for some of the local farmers. Ten years later, he had joined his father at his turpentine mill, but by 1940, he had married Thela, and they were living in Columbia County, Florida as farmers. Ten years later, they had moved to Douglas, Georgia, where he was listed as a chipper and also a dipper at the turpentine mill there. He would pass away on April 12, 1971, and was buried in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. Johnny H. McClure Sr. was born in 1909 to Lena Presley McClure, and in 1929, he was married in Pensacola to Mamie Kate Haynes. She was the daughter of John Haynes and Beulah Simpkins. By 1935, they were living next door to his in-laws while he was still working as a laborer. In 1940, he and Mamie had moved in with his brother Fred while working construction with Mamie doing domestic work. Johnny would pass away in October 1974 and was buried in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. On April 3, 1996, Mamie joined him in death and for whatever reason was buried in the Holy Cross Catholic Church Cemetery where she lies next to her sister Iona Haynes Hudno. His mother, Lena McCullough, had been born in 1876 and would die in 1981. She was also buried in Holy Cross near her two daughters. However, her mother, Sarah Presley, lies in the Chumuck Law Cemetery near her grandson, Johnny.
As you can see, there are several unmarked gravestones scattered throughout the dense foliage. You can see by the previous photos and videos how overgrown the cemetery is and how easy it is for these individuals to become lost. The following are graves that were known to be in the cemetery years ago, but have long since disappeared. John Wesley Barber was born in 1930 to the union of Walter J. and Colley Barber while his father was a local turpentine worker. In 1935, the Barbers were living in Milton next door to John Alexander and Carrie McCray Harris as a close-knit group. John would pass away in 1966 while living at 208 Gray Street, Milton, Florida, and was buried in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. He was a member of the Allen Missionary Baptist Church and a former private first class in the U.S. Army during Korea. He would marry Fabuline Ritledge on November 6, 1948 in Santa Rosa County. John's mother, Collie, would pass away in December 1973 and join her son and the Harris family in the Chumuck Law Cemetery. After John's death, his wife would remarry in 1967 to Matthew Blackman. Richard Davison was born in 1878 and died in 1959 and was registered as buried in the Chumuck Law Cemetery, but no grave could be located nor any information as to his life or death. Felter Fleming Sr. was born in 1893 and died in 1963. He was buried in the Chumukla Cemetery, but his grave could not be located. We do have records that he enlisted as a private in Company D of the 536th Engineer Service Battalion on June 21, 1918. This battalion was made up of all black Americans and mobilized at Camp Custer in Michigan. They were sent overseas to France, only to return on July 10, 1919, then demobilized on the 14th of August. After the war, he would marry in 1922 to Georgia Federick from Milligan, who was born in 1902 and passed away in 1953. They were working their farm as late as 1950, but he had worked as a laborer in the turpentine business in years earlier while living in the Wallace community. By 1954, he was a widower and working as a houseman at the San Carlos Hotel. Two years later, he was working as a laborer at the Escambia County General Hospital, following Georgia into death on June 9, 1963. There is no reason to doubt that Georgia is also buried in the Chumukla Cemetery. At the time of his death, Felter was a member of the Mount Moria Baptist Church in Chumukla and was living in the Wallace community. Although there is a question as to the name of the church that was once located next to the cemetery, Felter's newspaper article infers it was definitely the new Mount Moria Baptist Church. Next is Daisy Turnage Holly, nicknamed Dirtley, who was born in 1903 and passed away in 1969. At the time of her death, she was living at Route 2 Box 660 in Chumukla. She was a member of the Mount Moria Baptist Church and was married to Frank Wilson Holly Sr. They would marry in 1936 in Santa Rosa County, and he would survive her until 1984. She was the daughter of Caroline Turnage, who was married in 1894, although the name of Daisy's father has been lost to history. Then came Florence Holly, who was married to John Holly. She was born between 1865 and 1873, and died between 1945 to 1950. John's burial site is not listed but most likely in Chumukla Cemetery. In 1945, John and Florence were living in Milton's Precinct No. 2, five miles west of Chumukla and very near Caroline and Daisy Hully Turnage and also her daughter Rosie Lee Johnson and Irie Hully. Like John, the grave of Florence Holly has disappeared due to the dense overgrowth of the cemetery. Sarah Presley was born in 1862 and was married to Marshall March Presley, a.k.a. Presley, in 1870. Ten years later, they were in Pensacola's 8th Precinct with March, a laborer in the logging trade. In 1885, they were in the north end of Escambia County with March working in the turpentine mills. In 1900, 
The couple were living in Molino, Florida, where he was supporting them by day labor. March would pass away in 1920, and Sarah would join him in 1948, and buried in Chumukla Cemetery. Five of their children are connected with either the Chumukla or the Holy Cross Catholic Cemetery. Her daughter Mary Presley Moore passed away on June 9, 1962 in Newark, New Jersey, and was buried in the Chumukla Cemetery. Another daughter was Bessie Presley Robinson, who died on February 16, 1993, and was buried in the Holy Cross Cemetery. A brother, Jordan Presley, passed away on September 15, 1990, and joined his family at Holy Cross. Then there was Lena Presley McCullough, who passed on February 4, 1981, and would also join her siblings at Holy Cross. The last was Nezzy Presley Holly, who married Ira A. Holly. He passed away on March 3, 1973, and was buried in Chumukla, where Nezzy joined him on November 15, 1993, but for whatever reason, was buried in the Milton Kaiser Cemetery. Mary Wash Haynes Lavette was born in Butler Springs, Alabama in 1905 to the union of John and Beulah Simpkins Haynes. By 1910, she and her family were in Santa Rosa County. There, she would marry Bryant Lavette in 1934. She and Bryant split up in 1951, and she would pass away on September 2, 1957, and was buried in the Chumukla Cemetery. Sadly, her grave has long since disappeared. Bryant would pass away in 1977 and was buried in the Mount Sinai. James Edward McKinney, who was nicknamed Jimmy, was born in 1950 to the union of Edward Darrell McKinney and Hattie Beatrice B. Cardwell. He would marry Norma, whose last name is unknown, who would bear him eight children. He would pass away on September 15, 2014 and was buried in the Chumukla Cemetery, but his grave has long since disappeared. Horace Johnson was born in Jay, Florida in 1912 to the union of Jesse Johnson and Ella Maxwell in 1930. His father was a farmer in the Wallace community while Horace was working at a turpentine farm. He would marry Janie Lee Mims in 1934 and took up farming. Six years later, he was a farmer for the renowned James G. Pace. By 1945, Horace had remarried to Bessie May and was living with his new wife, son, and his elderly parents that he supported as a laborer. Five years later, they had moved to 1711 North Davis Street in Pensacola along with his widowed mother who had lost her husband in 1947. At that time, Horace had taken a job as a clerk at a wholesale grocery and was working 48 hours per week. He would pass away on October 25, 1965, and was buried in the Chumukla Cemetery, but his grave has long since disappeared. Albert Lee was born in Milton, Florida in 1917 to the union of Elizabeth Leslie Barr and Farron Theodore Lee. His parents had married in Santa Rosa County in 1907, and his father went to work at the local turpentine farms. In 1920, his father was still with the turpentine business up around Coon Hill. By 1935, his father was farming in the Wallace community to support his wife and five children. By 1940, Albert was working on the farm of the renowned James G. Pace. His father passed away in 1942, and there is no indication that Albert married prior to his death in March 1969 and subsequent burial in the Chumukla Cemetery. His grave has long since disappeared. Elizabeth Leslie Barley was born in 1875 in South Carolina. She would marry Theodore Lee in Santa Rosa County in 1907. Her husband worked in farming and in the turpentine fields around the Wallace and Coon Hill sections of Santa Rosa. Very little is known about her early life, but at the time of her death, on January 13, 1974, she chose to be buried by her son Albert in the Chumukla Cemetery. Her grave along with Albert's has long since disappeared. Johnny Sutton listed his birthplace as Chumukla, Florida in 1921 and was born to the union of Thomas J. Young and Betty Maley Young Sutton. Somewhere along the line, he married Dorothy May Sutton. 
There are only two prior employments listed, with one in 1945 in Broward County as an auto mechanic, and the other in Orlando, Florida in 1950 as the same. He would pass away in 1969 in Orlando, and his remains were returned home for burial in the Chumukla Cemetery.